So how long do we get to the Rockies, Kathy? We're going to be here in the afternoon, and then right up into the Rockies. Okay, I'm going to pace myself, though. Yep. Right? I'm getting excited about the Rockies. Okay, don't spend all your camera juice on the little foothills. Yes. Those are just appetizers. There's big mountains coming. That's okay. actually the best advice. I need, I need that advice. It's so yes. fantastic. David, you have the task of feeding people on this beautiful Canadian train. Tell me what it's like. Well, as you can see, it's limited workspace that we have on board here. Yes. What are some of the challenges of running this car that's so small? And I'm sure things happen here all the time. Okay. Well, you know, the movement of the train sort of comes second nature. You get a feel for that. And you... <laughs> yes. Our challenges, I would say, is probably the supply. We load our car with the product that we're going to need to carry us through for our, our meal service. Right. And what we want to do is have just enough supplies so that we can run our stock empty. The people who actually built the railroad, a lot of the Chinese immigrants, they would have traveled way differently than this. What do you think it would have been like in the 1800s? I mean, your job didn't exist then, right? No, I imagine <laughs> not. It probably wouldn't have. There, it would have been very difficult and of course we appreciate the fact that the immigrant workers were the ones that, that built our railroad and our country is built on the railroad. Our passengers often talk about the, the history of the train. For us in the kitchen, our, our main goal is to satisfy them through culinary endeavors. Not a lot of Chinese food production though going on. Well, I don't know how you'd fit a wok on here. But we do manage to produce uh, prime ribs in our ovens below. Oh, uh, racks of lamb, duck, mm -hmm. uh, scallops, and halibut. That sounds pretty a good. A pretty inventive menu, and it's certainly not anything like what it would have been in the original days of the train. So when you're having a tough time on the grill, do you kind of peek out the window and say, remember where I am? Or do you just still, is it still like a regular kitchen where you think, why am I here? No, absolutely. Thank goodness that we have the windows, that's for <laughs> sure. Take a break, yeah. take a peek out the window from time to time. It's inspiring. Yeah. Yes. I've been 14 years with the company, and Every time I look out the window as we travel through the Rockies, it's enchanting. Yeah. It's a big bonus. It's yeah. really, really what keeps us going here. I will appreciate you the whole time while I'm here. <laughs> I may come in and kind of peek in and see how it's going. But I just wanted to come and say hi and thank you for the food I'm about to eat. Well, I hope you enjoy it. It's a pleasure having you on board. Thanks a lot, David. I'm not saying that I'm coming in to offer any help. No. But if it does get hairy, you can come and knock on my door. I'll, I'll think about yeah. it. I don't know. I don't know how much help I'm going to be. Kathy, so where are we now? We're going to go into Alberta, which is the edge of the mm -hmm. prairie. Prairies extend from the southern part of Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba. Yes. Now, you know the good old joke about this area, right? You can watch your dog run away for three days. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I, if I had a dog, yes, I could see him miles and miles away. Yeah. It's great. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Thank you. See, every small town in the prairies has one. If it wasn't eight o'clock in the morning, I'd be in there getting some Chinese food right now. And look, it's still called a chop suey house. We gotta go? Let me sit on my